In this video, we're going to take a look at how do we construct uh, a scatter plot and identify a nonlinear correlation between some variables, identify what is that the equation, and what is the r squared value for that. So here I have some data. We have islands, uh, so a number, a variety of islands, the size of those islands in square miles and the number of different animal species on those islands. And so I am going to create a scatter plot of the size in square miles and species. So I highlight those two things. I'm going to then insert a scatter plot. And so it is right here. I'm going to insert that scatter plot. And so I have the scatter plot. Now with this scatter plot, I might rename it. Uh, it's the size of the island versus the number of species. Uh, I might on this add some axis titles. So we want to add some axis titles for this title. This is the species. Change that. I clicked on the title there. Click on the title here and clicked it a second time and delete it. And this was the size of the island. So I have those items. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to get a regression line for this. And so to get that regression line, I'm going to again come up here to chart elements. I'm going to click that plus button. And down here at the bottom, we see trend lines. Now, by default, that is going to be a line, a linear trend line. But if I click on this arrow, it gives me some other options. I could choose an exponential or some other things. And so this will show us a little bit of some of those different options. But there are even more options. And that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to try to fit a power um, yeah, trend line. And so over here, when I click more options, it gave me, I can choose that exponential. I can choose the linear or the lo a logarithmic. I could choose a polynomial and I could change the order of that. So if I, so that's a quadratic, a power two polynomial. I could choose a power three polynomial, which is a little bit different. I could choose a power four which will be different still. But here we're interested in a power. So I'm going to choose that, but I want to do a little bit more. I want to identify the value of that R squared. And so I can display the R squared on the chart, which is displayed right there just by clicking that check. I also want to display the equation. And so both of those things are displayed now. I'm going to move this over to a nice spot where I can see that a little bit more clearly. Uh, hopefully you can see that a little bit more clearly now too. So we have those values. Now when I look at those values, maybe I say, oh, I would like those values to look a little bit different. Uh, and so I can right click on this. So if I want to add more decimal places or fewer decimal places, I can right click on that. I'm going to format that trend line label. So to format that trend line label, I want it to recognize those as numbers and not this general category. So I choose number, and then I can change the number of decimal places. So I can go to four decimal places. I could go to 10 decimal places. And you see this evaluated out to 10 decimal places. So I can change if I needed to get further along in the R squared value, I can do that. Um, but I want four here, so I'll choose four, press enter. And just like that, I have a power um, trend line. And so you might look at this trend line and say, oh, that trend line, that value right there is way off. But these other values aren't too far off. That R squared value is pretty high right there. Uh, and so I could roll through that. Um, 
This is that regression equation. So it's a power regression equation, y hat. Uh, this value of y is 1.4443 times x to the 0 0.3715. And so if I had an x value, I could plug in an x value and evaluate that and figure out a predicted y value. Or I could plug in a predicted y value and then use some algebra to solve and find out what is the x value that is associated with that. Right. So that is how you would go through and do a, um, add a trend line, um, a nonlinear trend line to a scatter plot. So again, we can come in here, I choose add chart, that plus, clicked on it, chart elements, down to the trend line, more options. And if I wanted to have a lot of different things on the same chart, I could put an exponential on that same chart. And I could display the equation that's associated with the exponential right there too. And I see that R squared value is less than that R squared value, so the exponential, probably not as good of a predictor. Um, I could go through and say, oh, I don't want just that exponential. I want the a polynomial of power 3. And with that polynomial of power 3, I want to know what is that equation. And so I can see that equation too. So we can go through and do all kinds of different things here. Um, if I was just interested in comparing those things, I would put them all on the same chart. If I'm not interested in comparing those things, I probably wouldn't put all of those things on there. In fact, I would just leave the one. Uh, so whatever our best one is. All right, that is how I would roll through and create that. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.